Hello, dear friends, some words for Parshas Bo. The Egyptians were at the end of their rope. They really couldn't hold out much longer from these horrible plagues. Their agriculture was in ruins, their livestock was devastated, and all the wealth of the Nile had been depleted. Even Paro's own servants begged him, release the Jews already. One would have expected that there would have been great resentment against the Jews for being the cause of all of this suffering, death, and loss. And yet, not once but twice does the Torah state that Hashem caused the Egyptians to harbor the exact opposite, which was great admiration and affection for the Jewish people right before they left Egypt. The first citation of this was right after the plague of darkness. In explaining to Moshe what was about to transpire, Hashem told Moshe that the Jews would request items from the Egyptians before their departure, and then the Torah states, Vayitain Hashem et chein ha'am be'inei Mitzrayim. Hashem placed the nation's chein, which is usually translated as favor or appeal, in the eyes of Egypt. Even Moshe, says the verse, became a hero in the eyes of all of Egypt, including Paro's own servants. And the second time we read about this chein is when the Jews actually leave Egypt in chapter 12, when they actually ask the Egyptians for parting gifts, and the Torah says, Vahashem natan et chein ha'am be'inei Mitzrayim, that God granted this nation's chein in the eyes of Egypt, and that is why the Egyptians so readily granted their requests to the point where the Jewish people completely despoiled Egypt of all of its resources. Now, I would have understood the Egyptians giving parting gifts to the Jews out of fear, intimidation, or perhaps a desire to abate their own suffering. But that was not their motivation. As the Torah states, and as Hashem had promised to Moshe at their very first meeting by the burning bush, the Egyptians would be so filled with admiration for the Jewish people, they'd actually feel good about giving the Jews parting gifts. As the commentaries ask, how could this be that the very people who were responsible for bringing the plagues and all the suffering upon the Egyptians would now be the object of their admiration and affection? A slew of commentaries suggest that this was part of the miracle of the Exodus. Just as Hashem manipulated Paro's emotions and hardened his heart, Hashem also melted the hearts of the Egyptian people, forcing them to like the Jews for the first time. But I have a problem with that, because if this was truly a miracle, I don't see why this miracle was necessary. The Egyptians could have just as easily given the Jews great wealth out of intimidation and fear, and the resulting benefit would have been the same. Why was it so important for God that the Egyptians actually like the Jews before the Exodus? And secondly, why was it necessary for the Torah to point out this phenomenon twice? the first time after the plague of darkness, and the second time as they were actually leaving. The Ramban, to verse 3 in chapter 11, does not believe that this newfound affection was a miracle. Rather, it was a reflection of the Egyptian soul-searching, and coming to the realization, you know what, we're really the bad guys. They realized for the first time how truly cruel they had been to the Jews. They unfairly exploited and persecuted them. The plagues spurred the Egyptians to come to terms with their own guilt and their crimes against humanity. Their affection for the Jews was based on their compassion for their, for their own victims. There's a syndrome called Lima syndrome. It is the phenomenon in which abductors develop sympathy for their captives, named after the abduction of the Japanese ambassador's residence in Lima, Peru in 1996, by members of a terrorist group. Within a few days, the hostage takers set free most of the captives, including the most valuable ones, due to sympathy. Essentially, it's the inverse of Stockholm Syndrome. But it would seem that this is not a new phenomenon. The very first case of Lima Syndrome occurred in ancient Egypt. Rabbi Shmuel David Lutzato of the 19th century takes this one step further in his Torah commentary. He observes that, that at the same time that the Egyptians came to terms with their own evil, they also recognized that these Hebrew slaves were actually human beings. They came to the realization by seeing that one of the gods took a concern in their welfare to the point where that god was willing to move heaven and earth in order to save them. 
This raised the esteem of the slaves in the eyes of the Egyptians, whereas before they had viewed their slaves as subhuman, they now saw them as their peers, as fellow human beings, who were deserving of compassion and fellowship. And Shadal concludes that this is true of the human condition in all times and all places. The lower class is usually viewed as being other and less than because of their poverty. But when it is shown that this lower class of people have intrinsic value, they become more visible to the upper class as fellow human beings. That is why, for example, after Yosef proved himself to be of value in Potiphar's house, that Mrs. Potiphar started to view Yosef not just as a slave, but as a real man. And that is why she became so attracted to him. Perhaps we can now understand why this concept of chen, of this comeliness, of this appeal, appears in the Torah right after the plague of darkness, even though that chen would not become manifest until the Jews were ready to leave Egypt several days or weeks later. In this plague of choshech, of darkness, the Torah states, lo ra'u ishet achiv, that people could not see their own kin. They couldn't see, a person could not see his or her own brother or sister due to the great darkness. Now, how was this plague appropriate for the Egyptians? It was a result of their blindness to the Jewish people as being truly fellow human beings. They failed to recognize the humanity of the Hebrew slaves, despite those slaves' inherent value. And that is why the Torah states in the same verse, Ulechol b'nei Yisrael hayaor b'moshevotam, that whereas the G Egyptians were in the dark, the Jewish people possessed light in their dwellings. It was this light of humanity, this tremendous benefit that the Jewish people brought to society that the Egyptians tragically failed to see because they were shrouded in the darkness of their own selfishness and cruelty. You know, this is how the Nazis were able to justify treating the Jews of Europe with such cruelty. Take away their humanity, treat them like vermin, and you can justify just about any atrocity against a fellow human being. This is how slave owners treated their black slaves in the southern United States during the 19th century. Fortunately for the Jews, reparations came swiftly after World War II. The world, after witnessing the horrors of the Holocaust and Germany's great defeat and humiliation, had great affection and sympathy for the Jewish people, and that triggered the founding of the State of Israel. Germany itself, over the decades, has paid tens of billions of dollars in war reparations as a way of paying moral and material indemnity for the unspeakable crimes committed in the name of the German people during World War II. Sadly, it took a lot longer for the United States to recognize the humanity of the black man, and that is why this injustice has lingered to this day. Now finally, I believe that Hashem specifically desired for the Egyptians to have great admiration and affection for the Jewish people, because without it, the objective of having a chosen people would have been completely defeated. If the world does not look upon the Jewish people positively and with affection, then how can we possibly fulfill our role as a light unto the nations, which is what Isaiah calls us. Our role is to positively affect and influence mankind to recognize God. If Jew hatred and resentment runs rampant, we have no hope of helping mankind. This narrative of the Jewish people's chen is therefore a portent for future redemptions in Jewish history. When it is time for our, our ultimate redemption, the world will once again have chen for the Jewish people and a desire to attach themselves to us. We are already seeing this phenomenon in our days, and we can only pray for brighter days ahead. Human suffering may not be in our control, but how the individual reacts to that suffering is up to us. During this pandemic, some people have allowed their anxieties and fears to blind themselves to others' humanity, to not care about the public good, and to selfishly only take a concern for their own well-being. But those with a stronger and broader spirit have used these challenging times to have greater compassion for the family of man, and to reduce those artificial barriers which divide us. The benefit, and often the very objective of suffering, is to help reorient our vision, and to realize that the other is also a person. Only by taking a concern for others will we be able to emerge from this, from this suffering as better people. 
I can see you. Can you see me? May our improved vision bring us to the redemption. Bimhera bi amenu amen. Wishing you a beautiful Shabbos, my friends. Let's all get together at some point, whether physically or spiritually, figuratively, and realize that we are all one. Good Shabbos.